Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. And I do apologise to my regular viewers that this is the third enactment of it today. So this wee face has probably been on your TV a few times if you're an avid listener, and I do apologise. But the SMP given, keep giving me material that I simply can't ignore. This time is Katie Forbes that's having a... She's actually not trying to have a pop at the SMP, but when you actually read her words back carefully, she is, right? She's trying to defend them, but doesn't do a very good job of it, right? And I'll read out the story today by Chris McCall, the deputy political editor at the Daily Record, right? So he's went with the headline, Kate Forbes backs John Swinney to improve SNP integrity after general election disaster. The deputy first minister warned her party against navel gazing. Now, see, I'm not one of the people that politicians do this, that pretend they know everything about everything, right? I don't have a clue what that actually means, navel gazing. Now, it could mean two things. It could be navel as in your belly button. And I'm trying to wonder what that actually means by looking at your belly buttons, right? The other possibility is navel as in boats, right? I kind of guess the SNP ain't talking about boats and gazing at boats, right? So I don't actually know what she means there. It's like a buzzword bingo thing, you know, that just words that you just don't understand. Now, I don't think it's because I'm stupid. I just think it's because I'm 51, right? I'm old. I'm, I'm no hip now. And Katie Forbes is obviously a wee bit younger. So somebody please in the comments below tell me what navel gazing means because I ain't got a clue, right? It could mean something great or it could mean something bad. Anyway, while the former SNP MP, while a former SNP MP insisted Nicola Sturgeon had no need to apologise, right? So that's the headline. And the story goes, now I will be stopping several times while I read this out to you, because some of it's completely bonkers, okay? Kate Forbes has backed John Swinney to improve SNP's integrity among voters following a disastrous general election result. The Nationalists lost dozens of seats to Scottish Labour at a poll on July the 4th to end up with just nine MPs, right? Forbes, who was appointed Deputy First Minister by Swinney in May, said the party had to listen to the electorate and not enter a period of navel gazing, right? I'm kind of guessing it must be belly buttons because it's N-A-V-E-L. If you're looking at ships, it would be N-A-V-A-L. So I'm not that daft, right? However, they want to see change, she told, she told BBC Radio 4. This was a change election and that's what we're going to do. Right. It now comes after one SNP veteran called for Swinney to resign as party leader to allow a new generation to take charge. Alex Neil, who served as Scottish Government Minister under both Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmond, said Swinney should make way for Forbes or Westminster leader Stephen Flynn. Kind of think it's a bit late for that, Alex. However, the Deputy Minister, First Minister said she would continue to support the SNP's leader's mission, whatever that is. She said competence and integrity must be the hallmark of her leadership, and it's certainly the two words that have been on John Swinney's lips prior to the election, throughout the election, and now in the aftermath of the election. Right, so... Competence and integrity. Does that mean you've not had that before? Forbes also called for a transparent and open government. So again, that's you sound, try to sound really good and like, look at us, we're fan David Ozzy. But it means if you need to be transparent and open now, because you're calling for that, which means you didn't have it yesterday. Why not? You've been at this for 17 years, and now, after a big kick in the gonads at a poll, you're now going... I think we should actually be uh, transparent and open now. Maybe we should try some of that integrity stuff. You just don't get it. Those are two flags, as it were, that need to be planted in everything that we do. And I believe John Swinney is the leader to do that. Now, again, that's you saying, well, he's not doing it now. So you're actually saying that John Swinney isn't transparent and open just now. But he could do it, right? And I'm very pleased to be supporting him in this mission to achieve that. Joanna Cherry, one of the ousted SNP MPs, yesterday called for Sturgeon to apologise to party members for the number 
and manner of the election defeat. The former member of Edinburgh South West said there's been a huge strategic failure on Sturgeon's part to further the cause of independence and reach unconvinced voters. No half. But another ex-SMP MP insisted Sturgeon had no need to apologise. Now wait here, this crackpot. Hannah Bardell said, now Hannah Bardell, for those that don't remember, she's famous for two things, and nothing in them about politics. She's famous for doing keepy uppies inside an empty Westminster chamber in a hibs tap, right? That was it. That was all that people knew her for, until she made an absolute clown of herself one night on social media when the International Development Agency or some one of these um, Scottish um, office things was closing her office in East Kilbride, and the story was telling you that, and moving it to Glasgow, right? Now, she'd obviously heard, read the first part of the story and went, who do they think they are? They, they're ridiculous. They're in Westminster doing it again, cutting jobs in Scotland. Without reading the rest of it, they said they were moving office to Glasgow, right? That's that crackpot. That's the two things she's best known for after a term in Westminster, right? Keepy uppies and a hips tap and no known where Glasgow was, right? Anyway, she decided to jump in. Hannah Bardell said mudslinging from within the party was unhelpful and appealed for nationalists to pull together, right? That means she's looking for a gig in Holyrood. That's what it is, right? The former member for Livingston told LBC, I don't think you can put it all at any one person's door. And I also don't think that's very, excuse me, helpful. I generally think there's an opportunity for us to come together as a party, as John Swinney has tried to do. That's another thing that's contradictory. That means that you're no together as a party now. But remember all the nonsense during the campaign and yeah, tight parties that are close in elections. That's what you told us, suggesting you were tight. No, you, trying to sound good and make them feel better, is actually telling us that they weren't before because you're going to try and bring them together now, right? Now, here she goes, Hannah, we recognise there are issues and differences of opinion and different views, and that will, and that will and always has been the case, and it is the case in every political party. Well, if that's always been the case, why have you been pretending you've been so tight for years? Talking absolute dribble. Hannah continued, I just don't think that kind of stuff is particularly helpful, and I think... What our members want to see is us pulling together and looking at the areas of government, sorry, areas of agreement, which is most definitely on independence and how we forge with that. You're not going to stop, are you? You told us, vote for us, we'll get a referendum. Forget us half the seats, that'll be a mandate for a referendum, right? You get nine seats. Half the seats that you t you were aiming for 29. Now, bear in mind you won 48 the last time. So you weren't really aiming very high at 29, right? But that's what you told us. We get 29, that's a mandate, right? You get nine. And you're still going on about independence. Gonna just give your head a wobble, right? And just stop it. Even just for like, maybe two years, right? See when we get up near the Holyrood election in a couple of years' time, start talking nonsense about it then if you really want to, right? If you feel that that's got to be spoke about. But see between now and then, gonna just narc it. Please. See when you come back to summer holidays and you all start talking nonsense in Hollywood again. Gonna try and not talk about independence for a wee while. Right? Just leave it. It's kinda no working. We've had a tough time as a party, and I don't think that the sort of bloodletting and mudslinging that is happening, and it will be happening in all different quarters, is necessarily the most helpful thing. We have to listen to the electorate but we also have to communicate with them. So, these people, right, some of them are getting paid £91,000 to, like, be at Westminster and they keep you up, he's right, and others that are in their cabinet in Hollywood that will get paid about 110, 120 grand, something like that. They're all barking, right? They can't even, they're trying to sell them being good. But at the same time, they're telling us that they're actually shite just now, or they were shite yesterday, right? That's what they're saying with these stupid statements about we can do this and John Swinney's a man to get us this, right? That's mean you're not, you're actually admitting that you're not that now. And it's just mental. He's actually 
Now, Kate Forbes, right, I'll be honest with you, I used to think there's a lassie that could probably do well for this party, right? And if she was ever the, the leader of the SNP, we might be in a wee bit of bother as unionists, right? I've got news for you. I've got nothing to worry about, right? She is now as mad as the rest of them, right? I, people try to convince me that she was going to sort out the SNP. I don't think she can because she's as potty as... See that John Swinney as well, right? He's got to be the most boring guy that goes on the TV. I would struggle. I'm going to try, right, and think of somebody that is as boring as John Swinney, right? Now, I like leaders with a bit of charisma. I like leaders that can lead. I like leaders that I can follow. I say, do you know what? He's going into battle. I've got his back. I'm going with him, right? Nothing. Honestly, nothing. He has got to be... In fact, I need to do a video about him and his meeting with Keir Stammer, where he came out with something totally bonkers, right? He's got to be the most uninspiring politician. For, for, I'm not saying that. Humza wasn't inspiring. Nicola Sturgeon, to be fair, no for me, right? Because I thought she was a crank for day one, right? But people that were nationalists, right? That she, there was a target audience. They kind of bought into her leadership and she was going to do this and folk went, oh, yeah, that's good. Or Nicola, right? All that nonsense. Remember all that? When we'll go, we'll, when we'll clap for Nicola. John Swinney could, John Swinney couldn't get a clap in his own house, right? Never mind all oh, these cracking when we'll go outside and clap for Nicola once we'll stop clapping for the nurses, right? Potty, right? But anyway, at least she had a bit of character about her, a bit of charisma. I might not like her, but you could see she evidently had these attributes. Who, who thing me before them, Alex uh, Salmond, had character and, you know, attributes of being a leader. Then you get John Swinney. You're like, who are you inspiring? Right? You genuinely... I don't think he could lead Dwayne's across the road with a lollipop stick in his horn. You know, one of them. Right? They'd be like, who's he telling us what to do? Right? He has got nothing about him. I genuinely hope they stick with him. Right? Right through to the next Hollywood elections. Please don't sack John Swinney. Right? But saying that, I said that about Hamza, and we managed to find somebody's equally bad. So, who would be the leader? Now, Alec Neal has suggested Kate Forbes, who I used to be a bit like, don't want her as a leader of SMP. She might be quite good. But she's no. She's no good either. She sold her soul, right? And now she's coming out with stupid statements that actually contradict herself. Instead of making them sound good, you actually stop and read her words and go, you're telling us we're really shit now, right? Don't think that's a leader either. So I sort of ran out of ideas. So I probably will just stick with Swinney because you're better with that than potentially something that might be worse. At least you know he is rotten, right? He cannot lead nothing. Do you know what I mean? Imagine getting into battle with that guy. Um, I'm wondering if uh, you could maybe join me. We're, see the baddies over there that are shooting the guns at us? We're going to go and try and like, kill them. Do you fancy coming? I mean, if it's too much bother to you, we'll no bother, right? Get a grip of yourself, right? He's rotten. If you enjoyed the video, get a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. However, the most important thing of all, Seeing unless any of these crackpot SMP folk that are opening their mouth, naval, what was it, naval gazing? Right, nonsense like that. See if you, unless you're one of them that talks that absolute nonsense, or the absolute lunatics that still actually buy into their nonsense. See everybody else in the world, have a great day. Cheerio, bye now.